Hey y'all, I just came across this website and uh, I want to share it with y'all. Uh, regardless if you're a new believer or if you've believed in God and Jesus for a really long time or if you're reborn. Um, so I want to I wanna show you all this and go through this. So it's uh, peacewithgod.net. And uh, so step one is that God gives you and has a plan for you. You know, the Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John three sixteen. You know, Jesus said... I came that they may have life and have it abundantly, a complete life full of purpose, John 10.10. 10. So let's get into this video. He is jealous for me, loves like a hurricane, I am a tree. Bending me away to his wind and mercy. God loves you. And he loves you with a love that you don't even know anything about. Because there is no human love comparable to divine love. God loves you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to have fellowship with you. It doesn't make any difference how far you tried to run from God. He loves you. His eye is on you. He sees you. God created us in His image, and you as a person are important to God. The Bible says that God has the hairs of your head numbered. Every moment of your life is watched by God. Oh, how He loves us so. God is listening, and God loves you. He's your friend. He'll put his arm around you. And he understands, and he answers, and he's sympathetic to your problem. God loves you, and the Bible says that God sent his Son from heaven to this earth for you. Jesus Christ came to this earth to take your sins upon a cross. And he would have died had you been the only person in the whole world. He loves you. Don't ever forget he loves, 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 loves you. When Jesus Christ was nailed to that cross, he did that for you. That's how much he loves us. The Bible says, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, forever and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever. God loves you. And God has a plan for your life. All right, and then step two. So here's the problem. People are sinful and separated from God. Uh, we have all done, thought, or said bad things, which the Bible uh, calls sin. Uh, the Bible says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 Now the result of sin is death. Sp spiritual separation from God. Romans 6.23 And you know um, a sinful pattern starts a 
downward spiral. And uh, I can tell you that from my youth. Anyways, the good news. Who am I? What is the purpose of my life on, my life on this planet? Many go through life unfulfilled, unfocused, searching. A blank canvas waiting for a picture of purpose to be painted on us. What does it all mean? It was once said that there was a God-shaped blank in all of us. We look for many things to fill this. Friends, fashion, false faith, fornication, and the facade of drug-induced fantasies, but follow me. Follow me to the edge of an abyss where deep down inside we all know something's missing. See, from the moment God spoke time into existence and shaped us with his own hands in his own image, his plan was for man and him to be one. Creator and creation communing together in beautiful harmony. Sounds perfect, right? So what happened? Sin. We're, 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 we're sinners by nature. Sin opened this void. Sin drove us away from our friends. Sin separated us from him. And for many centuries since, we as human beings have attempted to bridge this ever-widening gap with philosophies and religion, wealth and so-called moral decisions, but the divisions became more instilled, that God-shaped hole in our hearts still unfilled, and mankind seemed doomed. Until, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. You shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Oh, but <laughs> this wasn't no ordinary baby. See, he grew into a boy, then a man, then a preacher, leading a multitude of people with radical and really off-the-wall teachings like, love your enemies, bless those that curse you, turn the other cheek. He's the greatest teacher that ever was. But this was no ordinary preacher. See, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So for our sins, he had to pay the price. <laughs> they put nails in his hands. Betrayed and denied. They hung him high and stretched him wide on a cross for you and I. And over 2,000 years ago, spike through his side. The son of God, our lamb slain before the world began, died. One of the most agonizing physical deaths that a person can suffer. They buried him in the tomb of a friend, but for three days his mother cried. And for three days his disciples ran, but thanks be to the Most High, that's not how the story ends, because three glorious days later, Jesus rose from the dead again. Oh, but this just wasn't any ordinary sacrifice because he became the way, the truth, and the life. And we now have a way through the Father, through him, uh, through the cross. Uh, we're now able to get across that great divide caused by sin, uh, separating us uh, from him. And he's calling us, but we've got to come. See, the choice is still ours, but he has provided all the love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And if we only believe that Jesus Christ paid this price, Jesus said, ye shall know the truth. No more separation. No more fear of death, no more holes in our heart, but we can now have eternal life. You see, God gave man a choice. You either accept it or reject it. All right, it's moving on to step three. God sent his son to die for your sins on that cross and and something with me is I feel like it's downplayed like as far as people thinking what it was how it, how it was whenever he was on the cross I mean we, we can't even fathom what it would have been like I mean he was tortured and and he he had to carry that big huge cross by himself i mean i think he had a little bit of help uh but for the most part it was just him the whole entire time and getting whipped and 
it's things we can't even think about. So, uh, that's powerful. You know, Jesus died in our place so we could have a relationship with God and be with him forever. Think about that. Forever. God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Messiah died for us. Romans 5 8. But it didn't end with his death on the cross. He rose again, and he still lives today. Christ died for our sins. He was buried, and he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3-4. Um, Jesus is the only way to God, Jesus said. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. First, or John 14.6, not First John, just John 14.6. All right, so... Here's the vid. On a daily basis, I wanted drugs, you know? I was like, right after school, I needed to go get something, just a different drug, just to try it out. So I started drinking at 15, and I just, I never stopped. We got drunk, and we got high on drugs. We had hangovers the next day, we'd get up and do it again. I just thought ramming my car into the embankment on a freeway was going to be the best way to get out of where I brought myself. You can use different objects, a blade to a safety pin. I would scratch at my skin over and over again. One day it just came to a point where I exploded. I knew I was breaking the law and I knew that I was ruining other people's lives, but frankly I, I didn't care. I just remember just like growing up going, you know, why is my life like this? I'd be miserable, you know, and just be empty inside. Watching my mom cry and just seeing that, man, she really wanted me to change. I really had no feelings anymore. It was kind of like, well, too bad if, if you know, it's, if my mom cries, she cries. And when I thought about that, I was like, what's wrong with me? Like, I've gone cold hearted. The pastor, he's like, you know, if you hang out with, with Christ and talk to him, and then all the stuff in your life will start to fall away one by one. It's his job to get rid of it. I just said to myself, you know what? I'm tired of having last times, and I'm tired of feeling awful. I'm tired of, of being tired of myself. I didn't like myself, so I didn't want to like others. And I just thought, Lord, if there is any help, one of my journals, I saw where just two pages are just dribbled with, with blood. I don't know why I did it, but I'd cut more and more, and it just wasn't getting any better. You know, I didn't feel any better about myself. So that night I decided to pray, but I didn't know what to say. So I said, God, I, I don't know who you are, and I don't really know how to find you, uh, but if you're God, and you're there, maybe you can find me. And I said, Jesus, you know, if you're real, like this guy said, take these drugs from me. And uh, I just said, show me. It was something that to me, I believe, happened when I sincerely gave my heart to the Lord. I was able to be real, to be genuine with him about the hurt I was dealing with. And I knew that Jesus was God, and I knew that he was the way, the truth, and the life. And I just had to choose to serve him. When we get that revelation and understand that Jesus died for our mistakes, man, we just were like, I'm saved, I'm like, I'm rescued. I just told the Lord, I don't want me anymore. I need you, Lord. I want you to change me and make me new. When I came to Jesus, all I had to bring him was junk. I needed to ask for forgiveness. I needed to repent of my sins and turn the other way and, and be open to what God wanted to do. I've 
think about how I pausing the video because right now it's 555 I don't know I, I look at numbers like that all right back to the video would cut on my wrist and Jesus was nailed there you know and that was his scar that he had but he didn't have to Jesus Christ says hope is possible it's there it's very much alive I was so relieved that there was hope. I was so relieved that, like, someone really did love me for me. There's no words that can describe the, the peace and the contentment. God's been consistent and He's been faithful. And it makes me love Him today more than I ever have. God proved to me that He hears the heart cry of desperate people, regardless of where they are. Just so y'all know, that, that guy with the long hair, he used to be in the band Corn. So, uh, yeah, and he was a really bad drug addict. So if God can do that to someone's life and bring him out of that, I mean, I haven't listened to much of his new music. I mean, he, I think he went Christian. But uh, if God can do that, he can... Man, God can do anything. All right, step four. Would you like to receive God's forgiveness? We can't earn salvation. We are saved by God's grace when we have faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. All you have to do is believe you are a sinner that Jesus Christ died for your sins and ask for his forgiveness and be thankful and grateful then turn from your sins that's called repentance not just saying it but actually doing it um, Jesus Christ knows you and he really, really loves you. What matters to him is the attitude of your heart, your honesty. We suggest praying the prayer below to accept Christ as your Savior. Here we go. How many of you here tonight are broken, fed up, but you don't know what to do? Smiling, but you're broken, hurting, barely coping, out there waiting, hoping for someone, somewhere, to tell you what you're missing, so you can get to living, you feel way beyond forgiving, you tried everything. The greatest problem in the world today is sin. What causes people to hate and lust and have greed? It's sin. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Just take the hand of grace. Your sins have been replaced by something beautiful. You're not unreachable. God's not waiting to judge you. God's not waiting to condemn you. He's waiting to receive you with mercy, with love, with open arms and forgive all your sins. No need for resistance. This time it will be different. Love will go the distance wherever you are. You have to repent of your sins. That means to be willing to change your way of living. You may have no power to do it, but if you surrender to Christ, He'll give you the power.
The Bible says you don't have to carry this load of guilt. I'm asking you to allow him to rescue you from sin. Sounds unbelievable, but you're not unreachable. Just take the hand of grace, your sins have been replaced by something beautiful. You're not unreachable. You may never have a tomorrow as far as God is concerned. You may never hear the gospel again like this, or your heart may not be this tender toward God. Come while you can, and don't put it off. You come. So this website's really good. It's uh, Billy Graham and the Evangelia. An evangelistic, evangelist, yeah. Anyways, that association. Um, check this website out. Pretty neat. All right, guys, y'all have a good day, and uh, God bless y'all.